Hello everyone, my name is Yoan Han. I am a practicing artist and art educator. I'm originally from South Korea. I moved to United States about 14 years ago. As a painter, I've been showing nationally and internationally, including solo shows in Boston, New York, and internationally, South Korea and Netherlands. As an educator, I've been teaching at MFA, Boston, and MassArt. In this session, we're going to learn three basic technical skills in watercolor. We are dealing with negative space. When you hear the negative space, it sounds rather abstract, but a background and negative space can be the same word. However, background sounds more passive and negative space can be more active space. So we are going to use negative space as an active space in this demonstration today. Okay, now I'm going to explain to you what materials we need for this tutorial. I have watercolor palette, water bucket, brushes, pencils, and watercolor paper. I have 2B and 4B pencils in my hand right now. It's good to have erasers as well. This is a plastic eraser and you can also have a kneaded eraser to use. You need flat brushes like this, which has a flat edges, you see that? And also you need round brush, like this way. You have this round edge, you see. And you don't have to have that many brushes. You, if you have one flat brush, one round brush, that are good to have. In terms of the watercolor palette, what you need to know about the palette is that the palette has to have enough space for mixing your color and also you have to squeeze the paint in the palette in advance so that it can nicely dry before you use. You use cold pressed watercolor and also at least it's ideal to use 140 pound or heavier paper. And lastly, we have a water bucket. You can use your leftover iced coffee plastic cup. That's just perfect to use. I'm holding one bucket right now, but you can have two or three when you actually paint. Now, we need to talk about what piece is going to be the inspirational artwork I'm going to use for our demonstration. In the Museum of Fine Art Boston, we have this wonderful painting from John Singer Sargent called Corfu, the Terrace from 1909. And before we talk about it, I just want to talk a little bit about how amazing it was when I went to the exhibition itself of John Singer Sargent solo in MFA 2014, that watercolors were spectacular. He's, I gotta say, one of the masters in watercolor. When you look close to the trees and bushes, they are not much depicted. They are acting not as if a foreground frontal situation. They act as if background. The sculptures are very pale, almost white or grayish color, and that got the light, and trees right behind it. So trees are very dark. It has the color of blue or purples, and also it's not necessarily that much identifiable because John Singer Sargent made it that way so that the sculptures pops. And also, when you look into the tree very closely, you can start to find some sort of hide-and-seek nature in this painting. 
see through the tree branches and bushes you can pick some part of the ocean and skies shining through the bushes of tree because they are also the functionality of negative space and when we talk about negative space earlier we said normally we treat it as a something passive but in the little part of that ocean view and sky and urn urn is in the foreground place as well but it's still very pale color they are all acting strongly positive way in other words in this painting there are many different kind of shape shifting reality happening isn't it interesting that the bushes are behind the sculpture but it looks as if it's foreground some point is it because the positive and negative space are equally juxtaposed in this painting that's the reason why i picked this one we're going to use watercolor medium as same as how john singer sergeant depicted it we're going to do the demonstration. We're going to look at dry brush layering, wet on wet, bleeding technique. So I have a little bit of water and I'll pull out this brownish color. I can pull out any color actually. So just put a little bit more color than you think. A lot of beginners have problem have too much water, too little paint. It's rather have a lot of paint. You can go slow, you can go fast, it changes. And then in dry brush layering, after the first layer dries out completely, and then you can put another layer on top of it. It can be the same color or different color. So let's switch the color a little bit. Since I put a warmer tone in the first layer, I'm going to switch up to get a cooler color for the second layer. Let's put blue, for example. Before you put the blue, make sure you just wash your brush completely first. And then I'll just put the water and pulling a little bit of indigo blue color this time. The rule is the same always having enough paint not too much water more enough paint and when you see the brown paint on the paper the starting point and ending point of brush stroke are still wet but in the middle section is dried if you're not sure you can see how the water reflecting or you can touch it oh in the middle part it's dry because it doesn't come out to my finger. Now, you can target the place where it's dried and then put another brush mark on top of it. Make sure don't touch where the water is still not dried yet. See what happens when it touches when the blue touches when the brown is not dried, then it's merging together. That's not a perfect dry brush. But you and your place like here, when the blue on top of the brown, they have this beautiful intersected part. That's what the dry brush is. Dry brush layering, you can layer so many different layers on top of each other. Now, let's move on to the wet on wet technique. Wet on wet technique needs a little bit more water and more pigment. Compared to dry brush layering, it needs more water and speed as well. I put long, big part of brush ground mark marking that paper but this is going to be different before this indigo blue dries out completely I'm going to mix different color I'm just pulling out a little bit of purple right now and before that blue dried out completely you're merging it right next to each other See, so the indigo blue and the purple doesn't have any hard edge. It only have a beautiful soft edge. And then let's go back to the first red-brown color to do the same thing. Now, when you see it, you only have hard edge 
on the border of the entire thing. But inside the field, that indigo blue, purple, and red brown, they don't have hard edge. Everything's soft edge. Okay, now let's go back to the dry brush. Uh, because we have this beautiful purple, I'm going to put that on top of it and see how it can intersect again. Now some parts have a third layer, if you see it. The last technique is bleeding. Bleeding is almost the cousin technique of wet on wet. Only the order is different. You need to put the water first. So I'm completely washing the brush and then put enough water on the field. Not really a color, just water. Water on your des desired field. And then I'm going to put the paint inside. You can just poke it like this or paint inside. And you can use multiple colors. I will use maybe even warmer colors such as yellow. So you see some sort of a marble effect happening. So that's the three techniques we deal with before we move on to the second step. Okay, now I just briefly had a short sketch on the scene that looks similar to the John Singer Sergeant Terrace piece. This is not exactly the same, but similar composition, similar situation. I have this beautiful sculpture format and surrounded by bushes and trees. Now, I would like to put down a basic neutral tone of the paint in this paper. That will be our step two. So this time I'm not going to use too much of intense dark color. I'm going to put a neutral tone. In other words, it's not going to be too much paint, just good enough paint. But there's one thing to remember that sculpture and podium part will be remain as pale the way it is i'm not going to touch it that will be our beautiful negative space so which in other words i'm going to paint around it i will start with this brown color so i don't care too much of the details shares and foliages i just care about the big shape itself Whenever you deal with the edges of the object, just be extra careful. After the tree, I'm going to deal with that sky part, perhaps. Sky, I will use similar but different technique. Probably the bleeding will be fantastic for doing it. Always check where which part is completely dried, what part is still wet. And so I'm going to just put the water itself. I'm always going to be extra careful for the edges. Especially when I know that the green part is not completely dried yet. In terms of the border between trees and sky, I used a round brush. But when you try to get a bigger space, it's always good to use a flat brush too. With a flat brush you can get bigger spots and now this part of wood trees still dried out completely so i can deal with the ocean part the principle will be the same i'll put the water first okay this is nice step three so now when you see this painting you see the first thing we did using bleeding and wet on wet technique to put on the basic neutral tone it's all dried out and when you see those marks that's what we call watermark and that's what happens when you use a lot of water some people love it some people hate it I love the watermark I just think that's a beautiful thing what's happening in the watercolor now this is gonna be our last step we are not going to use a lot of water we're going to use less of the water doing more of the depths pulling out types of stuff but when you see it you see that sculpture in relation to the bush bush in relation to the sky that's kind of having its own interesting shape shifting effect that's what is important for this demo this time we're going to use a smaller brush 
I'm going to use primarily round brush this time and as I mentioned a little less water and we're going to use a lot of dry brush layering technique and also whenever your water gets dirtier it's always good to have a clean new water let's start with um, putting this other part of the ocean which I did not put last time this time I'm not going to use the um, bleeding or wet on wet technique too much and then I'm moving on to the bush and getting the depth and start to get the foliages more clearly you should understand they are under the shadow that's why the colors are not exactly green and it's also important to have a bone structure the branches first so that you don't have to get confused the structural format this time as I mentioned before we're going to use a lot of dry brush layering so right now this brown or this blue on top of the bush is technically already dry brush because the layer dried out and then we are putting another layer on top of it as you see it you think that I'm just pulling these leaves randomly but it's not actually the case each types of placement just think it as uh, different clusters so lightest mid-tone and dark darkest that's kind of where uh, wherever you're putting that row is adjusting I'm not really caring too much about exactness of the foliages and bushes I just want the brush mark to make more lively effect more yellowish green I'm trying not to touch anywhere which is wet I'm always touching somewhere which dried out see now things are more layered and dimensional slightly more and before we go to that sculpture I just want to have a little trick to teach you how to make uh, dimensionality on the ocean part I'm putting a bigger mark right here and then it's gonna be slowly getting smaller and just one more color I'll put it one other types of blue and then I'll go to that white space white is always really difficult to do but we can still put some gentle touch in here to figure out just going to put lighter touch let me see I just put a little bit of mark and you can use what it has in or here already the mark just pulling out the water and dragging into formatting this part of the sculpture and when you see it oh my god this is too dark actually it's not true when it dries out it's not going to be as dark as you see it here so just keep taking it and I'm leaving a little bit of the mark as a white light reflection and this section I'm still going to touch with really pale gray almost invisible but still it's better to have something this time I'm going to make it a little bit darker and then make it a little more specific but darker doesn't mean it always have to be gray you can use all the other colors we used to make the gray more interesting so I just going to mix a little bit of the purple and that means right now this sculpture can have a chance to fight against the bushes so I'm just going to have a rear punctuation of darkness on the bushes so that the shrine or this sculpture pops up more so I'll just make the same logic to make gray so this is dark gray color and depending on how many blues putting in or brown putting in you can make it cooler or warmer gray I'm just gonna have a little pinch of indigo blue in here and then putting it which not touched the sculpture and then 
this is a foreground so I'm going to make that little heavy and popping too whenever it's up front and has a light is light and dark is dark obviously the foliage should come along as well now I'm just going to have a one more little touch on the sculpture and patio part this time I'll do something weird maybe you think so I'm going to put really unrelated color to reinforce that painting I'm going to have a very pale warm color just randomly put it random brush mark to just lightening it up some of the color we never used here so far which is probably pure yellow well, let's just put it yellow and see what can happen that will just give a beautiful complementary effect and a little bit of a red can be interesting too but don't do too much it will be distracting this is the space now where that podium and sculpture is on the foreground and the tree bushes are in the background and the shrine the sculpture is the negative space and normally we see the tree as a foreground piece but then I just yield it to the sculpture so that the tree functions as if a background so the shrine and the sky functions more like a foreground which doesn't happen most often time but since it happened a lot in the Sun Singer Sergeant Terrace painting and I would like to wanted to give you that lesson about negative space and of course you can do a lot more works on here you can make a more realistic painting on there but this time I'm just going to finish by here to just letting you know how you can make the shape shifting effect by using watercolor negative space is not necessarily easy to understand to get through space in between but I wanted to show you a bit and pieces how it can be created in watercolor alongside with that you can have so many different notion and knowledge on watercolor including translucency transparency and opacity and using different non-art material together with watercolors such as salt alcohol masking tape masking fluid and so on you can navigate many different things in watercolor more than you imagine and thanks for this session everybody